Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I wanted to jump on. This is my first uh, video filming at the trailer, so it's a very primitive setup. I'm uh, bouncing around from trailer to my mother-in-law's while, we'll, uh, while we're building our home. So uh, this is a very primitive setup. The lighting isn't the best, but I did bring some supplies to the trailer because I'm always looking for something to do. And uh, I was in the local town that I've moved to in Bracebridge, Ontario, and I found this lovely little bookstore and I was in their botanical section, of course, that's, that's where I gravitate to, that or the art section. And I found these, this lovely little field book of American wildflowers and I just thought it's such a beautiful book. It's got some fantastic etchings in it and uh, very inspirational, very informative and uh, kind of old. It's 19, published in 1902. And right beside this one was another one uh, that was published a year later, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's very, very similar. And so I thought I'll buy them both. This one I will rip and use up the, the beautiful sketches and the pages. And this one I will leave intact because it's just, it's just so charming. I love it. So the reason I'm showing you these today is because they were the inspiration behind what we're going to do today, which is these cute little sketches that I pulled from the book and uh, redrawn in my own little way. Uh, so I have this real fine liner. It's a graphic uh, 0 0.1, so super, super fine. I don't know if that's going to be in focus, but uh, very, very fine point marker. And it's really fun to do these delicate little sketches with. So I thought we would uh, do that together today. So I've done a few here, and of course I antique them up because uh, I like them to look old. And then I, d I went a little step further and put like some stitching in, some faux stitching. Here's one that shows the stitching. So they're just lines and make it look like it's stitched because of course in my trailer, I don't have my sewing machine. So I thought that would be fun. And these are just done on scraps. So in my case, I have some scrap watercolor paper here that I have left over from making some bookmarks. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe make a, a little envelope today together. And I hope I'm in frame. The camera is right in front of my face, so I can't really see. I should probably tape off the desk and see whereabouts uh, my frame actually sits. So I just wanna trim this up a little bit. And you, as you well know, I don't do much straight. I'm going to put the pocket in now so that I don't forget about it and sketch where, I, where I'm going to cut. And this tool is getting very dull, so it doesn't make the nicest cut anymore. All right. So that's all I did. So I got my little piece folded up with a little indent and let's do some sketching. So my approach to sketching is very loose, simple. Um, I don't like to stress myself out. I just want to have fun. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I have two sweaters on and my hands are really cold. It's only 12 degrees here right now. Um, no, I don't know what's going on. It's freezing here and, uh, it's like mid June and it's early May temperatures in the morning here. So I thought, uh, um, we would find a cute little specimen here and sketch it. So isn't this book just so charming? This is a nice one. Pigweed. Huh. Thumbleweed. So there you go. So make sure I'm in frame here. I'm just going to doodle it. So take my pen. I have a coffee too because I'm cold. So I apologize. Get comfortable. Use your favorite tools or try experiment with a new tool. In this case, I'm using a very fine liner, but you can use a pencil. I'm going to try and keep my hand out of the way and I hope that you can see me and maybe move you down a little bit closer if my camera will reach. That's probably the best I can do. All right. So I like to start with a, with an angle. I, you can go straight up if you want, but because this is, is just as wide as it is almost tall, I like to put things on an angle for an interesting composition. So I'm going to just sketch in my reference to my stem. And then I'm going to start with the little puffy flower pod here. So I'm just going to doodle that in. And you can see I just stay very loose. I want to kind of capture more of the texture than anything else. And I'll put a couple of extra scribbles in where I want some shading. 
I'm just going to pull out that shape, doodle away. And I call them doodles because they're relaxing. I don't put myself under pressure to make a masterpiece. If this doesn't work, it just goes back in the scrap pile. The minute I find I put pressure on myself to do something perfect or really well is when I start screwing up because I have that added pressure. Like even while I'm filming right now, I have a little bit of pressure to make sure I, I know what I'm actually talking about while I'm teaching, but I still try to keep it kind of loose and easy. And if I make a mistake, then I make a mistake. So here's some leaves. There's a couple of leaves. Hopefully that's in frame. There's a couple of leaves poking out through the back here. So that's what these guys are. I'm just going to put those in. And there seems to be one over here. And you don't have to draw this exact shape. We'll, we're going to change it up a little bit. But we want to capture the form of this flower. So then it starts going into some petals. Sorry, some leaves. So for this one, it has a crossover. So we're going to take that line. I'm going to go over and then I'm going to loop back on itself. And then the second half of the leaf over here. I'm going to shade that in a little bit. Okay. Cut that out a bit more. There we go. Mm, do one over coming this way. And I love adding this type of little charming drawings to um, journals. I just love adding the textures and the I, I sign them. And again, if you're spending a lot of time drawing, you know, you're not a quick drawer, you like to take your time, you can photocopy these, you can scan them. So you get more use out of them, putting all that work into them. You might not want to just use them once. You might want to use them over and over again. So scan your work or photocopy your work if you don't have a scanner. I take my work to... Um, a photocopy place because I also don't have a scanner. So now there's a couple more flower pods down here so we'll just scribble those guys in. And just nice and loose just scribbling away. Literally scribbling. <laughs> All those years in math class that I scribbled and didn't pay attention is now paying off. <laughs> Not so much with math but <laughs> but with doodling. Oh my window's open. I don't know if you can hear that. I've got a pretty cool sounding bird out there. Or maybe it's a squirrel, actually. Rattling away. All right, so now let's do another leaf. So they're getting a little bit wider and a little bit thicker because the bottom half of the plant's going to be more mature than the top. So they're going to have more growth, a little bit wider, a little more substance to them. So I'm going to loop that back down like that and give it its stem. So you can speed up or slow down this video as much as you like. And I hope you sketch along with me. I hope this inspires you to start giving yourself the opportunity to sketch or paint. If you follow my channel and I hope you do hit the subscribe button and the notification button. Uh, my internet is somewhat unpredictable at best these days. So I can't tell you when I'm going to upload the next video because sometimes it takes three days to upload. So uh, hit the notification button. That way you won't miss anything when it finally does upload. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit for my wrist. So I'm going to put one behind the other one here. And this is a cute little, a little trick because you want to create depth in your drawings. Then you want to tuck things behind things and it creates a little bit more depth as opposed to just doing things flat. So we're gonna fill in this and obviously we don't see behind this piece. So it continues on the other side. And I'm gonna do it a little bit darker so it looks like this one pops forward. Just little, little tricks like that help create more depth to your drawing. So you can see here you can see this petal, this leaf sits in front of this one just because I drew this one a little bit darker and I stopped it where it crossed behind and again, creating more depth. So another little, little trick to practice. So there's another little flower bud in here. 
So we'll put that in, we'll scribble. Nice and loose. Lots of fun. And again, all this work, you can photocopy. And if you've got like a software where you can manipulate pictures, even more fun, because then you can change the colors and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna do this leaf now. So I don't know if you can see it, but these leaves are all pointing away growing up the side this one is growing towards us so you can see the stem drops behind it and it creates the the leaf in front so we're going to do that right here because i've drawn the stem already here we can't put it there so i'm going to put it right at the base here so i'm going to put the leaf coming around in front and then attaching down to where the stem will continue and it's got a bit of a curve on it. So the leaf curves, the tip of the leaf curves towards us like that. And then the vein in the back continues down like this. And then we're going to give it some texture by scribbling it in. So you'll see I'm doing these contour lines, which I've talked about before in my cookie sketches. It's never back and forth or straight. It's always following the curve in which things grow. The direction that they grow you can capture that and really observe that in your drawings then your your realism will go up up like 90 percent just instantly gives it a much more realistic look than just going straight back and forth to shade it in and then the stem will continue here we'll darken this a little bit so it pops this petal this leaf forward and now we have one growing towards us going to give this a little bit of texture so there's a little stem coming out here with a little flower bit on it a little floret I'm going to scribble that in just take your time have fun don't forget to breathe I love it when I teach um, class in person my favorite part is when I look up to see how people are doing everybody's got their tongue sticking out because they're concentrating so hard it's adorable I love it. I, I have to remind them, have fun. Don't forget to breathe. Put your tongue back in your mouth <laughs> before you bite it off. Yeah, when you're concentrating hard, you stick your tongue out. It's pretty funny. All right. So another little floret here, a little flower. I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to put a leaf here, though. I feel like there's just a little bit too much negative space. So I'm going to draw my own. I'm not using the reference anymore so I'm changing up the drawing a little bit from what's in the book and I'm just gonna do the same thing just follow the direction of the the petal the leaf's growing and I might give it a little bit of shadow there and maybe one coming behind here Just so this negative space filled up a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this guy a, a rolled look. And then I'm gonna color it in. And I really love working with this fine liner. It makes such a delicate look to your sketch. So it's worth a try. Try different things. Soft pencils, hard pencils, and by that I mean that the the, the number of the lead so an h for example is a hard lead a 2b is a nice soft lead but you can go all the way up to like a an 8b which is incredibly soft and you'll get very different results um same with pens so you'll ballpoint ink pens all kinds of different results from different different uh materials so you see little pens at a garage sale grab them and then you'll find what you like the best okay there we go there's our little our little botanical sketch and you can write you can write in here what, what it's called i hate my writing but i'm going to do it anyways so i envy those um people who have beautiful writing that cursive writing i love it i don't but it's all right i've got to go in our comfort zone and then i do my little signature i always sign my work whether it's successful or not, it's still yours. You know, you pass it on or you allow people to use it. Make sure you put your name on it. 
And then I'm just going to round the corners to this pocket. And then I'm going to ink it up and I use my, oh, I need some coffee, it's cold. Mm. Brush Corduroy is my new favorite. Uh, I used to use Vintage Photo, but now I'm really, really enjoying this uh, Brush Corduroy. So I'm going to give that a go. And I'm just going to do the edges here. I want them nice and dark. And then I'm going to rub in just a little just to vintage it up because I do like that grungy old vibe quite a bit and there's our little pocket so in this case um my glue is not here so I haven't brought it over yet I'm going to do these little I don't know what they're called you'll see them in a second they have like little tails that you open and I'm just going to do the top corners and the bottom corner and that will create the closed pocket closed enough where you can slide something in it it probably wouldn't hold small things because the sides will still be open but it'll hold some ephemera for us these little guys so they have little tails on them i'm sure they have a name butterfly clips i don't know but uh they, uh, they're pretty handy and they're pretty cheap. So I hope I'm on camera here. I hope the sound is good. It's my first video here, so we'll see. Hopefully the setup will improve as I get more settled, but just wanted to jump on and show you what I've been up to with the uh, creative process. And like I said, I've discovered a new uh, bookstore so I'll be going back to see if they have any fun ephemera like postcards or letters or things like that because that would be fun to find and there it is there's our little pocket so why don't we draw another one just to fit right in here while I have you and again you can fast forward or do whatever you like uh, to draw along with me so that one fits let's see what we can find to go in with this isn't it just a beautiful book? These are pretty. We do a little flower together. Let's do a little flower. All right. So I'm going to start with the uh, the flower head here. And this is a corn cockle. I don't know if we have them here in Ontario. We have something similar that's blue, but I don't recognize the name. But this is an old book as well. So who knows? Maybe the botanical names have changed. So I'm gonna mimic the five petals, one, two, three, four, five. Again, nice and loose, just holding my pen loosely. I'm not white knuckled. I'm just doodling nice and loose here. I'm gonna put the little stamens in, give it a little bit of texture with some lines. Remember, I'm not going back and forth like this. I'm going as the flower grows, so the petals grow out from the center. That's where my lines come from. And those little tricks are what makes the difference between a flat drawing and a drawing with a little bit of dimension. So now the bottom of the flower is showing a little bit. So we'll put that in. And then we'll pull the stem down. Nice long stems it has. And then it's got these little things that come out, little petals of some kind or leaves between the petals. I'm trying to make them not quite uniform and going in some interesting directions so that it's not too much of a pattern. All right, and let's do this one over here. So this is stem coming this way. And it's got this big channel here for the flower and then the petals. So I have a petal facing me, I have a petal moving away from me, petal almost facing me completely, one completely facing me and one moving away. And of course this one I've decided to put behind because I've already drawn this so it's going to have to go behind. So wherever it crosses over I stop the line 
and now I'm just going to put the stem in, give it a little bit of texture, maybe darken it up just a little under here, and then pull the stem down, give it its little petal things that are coming up. <laughs> my technology, uh, my technology, my my vocabulary when it comes to botanicals isn't the best. I'm sure everything here that I'm drawing has has a name of some kind. But I'm I'm more into drawing it than pronouncing it. All right. So, let's give it these leaves that come off the base. Let's get that one a color in. And there's another little wiry one. And we're making up our own, so I'm I'm kind of just just deciding where I want to put things now because my negative space I have to consider the composition of where everything's going and how full I want it so do I want to leave this negative space or do I want to put something else there so I think I would like to add one of these ones that look like they were they're going to seed now so let's do one of those and we'll cross this one behind so I'm going to just cross it through and draw it gone to seed by the looks of it. So the flower's gone and it looks like these pieces are still remaining along with the pod here. So that's kind of fun too to draw a flower in different phases. So if you're really into botanicals, capturing the stages that these flowers and all these specimens go through from seedlings to, to full actual seeded plants it's kind of fun as well to study and to sketch. So I'm going to put them out here. So different seasons, you can get different looks, different color palette, obviously. Uh, lots of fun in the garden. Okay, so I think that will do. I'm just going to darken up this back stem. So if I see here there's not a lot of definition as to what's in front and what's behind so if you add just a little bit of darkness a little bit of shading to this one that goes behind you can see it pops the one that sits in front ahead and it gives your drawing a little bit more definition the more you can tell the viewer where everything sits and lays on itself uh the the more comprehensive and the more realistic the drawing, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm just gonna vintage it up a bit. And I think I will write um, corn cockle, corn, hope I'm saying that right. Cockle, and of course a little signature. And then do I have uh, something, maybe we can make a little Tiny, just a tiny little pull tag off of another little scrap here. Just to complete the ephemera here. Of course, I don't have a stapler with me. I'm literally on very few materials up here right now, but it's something I'm working on bringing up. And then maybe we can just hole punch it right through here, just for something different. Because again, I don't have any glue, so I just want the small hole punch. Sorry for the shadow. Hopefully I can get it centered. And uh, put one of these little guys through here. If you know what these are called, let me know. <laughs> so then I, when I use them again in another video, <laughs> I'll know what to call them. And I'll put that right through there. And open that up. And there we go. A little, just a little pull for our little thing we created. And look at that, all hand drawn. And again, scan them, photocopy them, put them in a, I use Procreate myself on my iPad and I can take them and manipulate them further and print them. So don't think all this effort is just wasted on just one little sketch. You can reproduce and reuse your sketches. but the the point of today is to really just take your time and 
really use your pen delicate and the light touch and remember to breathe and relax and have fun sketching. And I get a lot of people comment like they can't draw a straight line. Well, that's good news because there are no straight lines in this. So if you're if you can't draw a stick figure, even better, because this is this is going to show you how to build up a little bit of confidence with yourself step by step. It's like anything else. Somebody nobody knows how to knit until you're actually shown how. So take your time and have fun with sketching and and you might really just surprise yourself. And I'd really love to hear if uh, if you've given it a go and if you've given it a try. And again, having a reference beside you what a difference, right? Like just having something to visually see. And this, the sketching style is very similar. So this is technically looks like an etching, which means they would have used a, a metal plate, scratched it, dipped it in acid and then printed it. So it's a different, obviously a very different technique, but it still has the, the nice little sketch lines uh, that they use as carvings that you would use as a pen. So a lot of fun here. And I plan on using this book again. Uh, we're going to do some more videos soon when I have a little bit more materials up here and uh, where did I put it so we're gonna start creating and decorating the inside of one of our um uh, what is it called signatures for this book co collection we've been working on uh so I've done a few videos on how to make this book so now I'm going to use this botanical book this one and we're going to start making some fun things with it okay so we're going to add some some sketches and we're just going to have fun decorating so i hope you hit the subscribe button i hope you come back um there is an etsy store update on my etsy store there are some new digital copies that i've put together um, this will probably be a new version as well it'll be weeks before i get to it but anyways i hope you enjoyed that video i hope you come back and visit me again and i hope hope you give sketching a try all right guys have a wonderful day bye